What if somebody actually made a Murphy bed that didn't block a front windshield? Hey everybody, Josh your RV Nerd here with Bish's RV taking a look at like a cult following kind of floor plan. This is the 208 BHS Apex and this thing manages in a narrow body to accomplish things a lot of 8 foot wide standard body campers just don't do. It gives us a 60 by 80 true queen bed and you can choose either Murphy or non-Murphy version but the way that they do it by like half folding up into something of like um, a day bed behind a potential jackknife sofa doesn't block the windshield. Have you ever seen, how many RVs have these Murphy beds that block the windshield? So it, it basically it's eye candy from the outside but it's a nearly completely non-functional item. You don't run into that here. Now this is an all aluminum skele uh, skeleton. You have laminated roof, floors, walls. Uh, it's also a double Asdell product where they're using the Asdell on the inside and outside layers of the walls. But you might have noticed there's like a giant hole in the roof, and by that I mean the big stargazer skylight that you can option into these. You're not forced into that. You can option uh, into that. By default, it actually doesn't have that, in case you're a little spooked by it or just don't like it. I don't know. Maybe you don't want the squirrels peeking at you at night if you're hugging. I'm not sure. Uh, this has a little miniature camp kitchen, a full-up cargo bunk. It doesn't have an, a rear outside access door. I wish it did. But information like that, telling you here's what it does have, here's what it doesn't have, that's the kind of stuff we're going to be doing for you in this video to help you make the best and most educated decision possible. For the 23 season, they have significantly improved their solar package. That is one major thing I'm really happy to see. They now have a 30 amp charge controller instead of a 10 that was basically maxed out. And instead of a 100 watt panel, they have 200. And with that 30 amp controller, they could add some more if you were so inclined. So they've done some good bulking up there. And for a trailer this size, it's narrow, it's light, it's tandem axle. And we're looking at it in the, uh, the like off-road version, as, as they call it. I call it off-pavement. But we're, we're getting to see almost like every option possible on one of these today. Let me know what you think of this one as we go. Where do they nail it and where do they fail it? Now this thing, it's like the camping equivalent of a, uh, a John Hughes 1980s movie classic where it's like developed its own little kind of cult following. There's entire Facebook groups dedicated to this one. And I've never claimed any RV perfect, but it is one of the happier groups uh, related to like RV ownership and camping that I do find on, uh, you know, places like Facebook. And I think that that says quite a bit. Now it's a six and a half foot interior, uh, well, sidewall height, but it does have a, uh, a little bit of a vaulted ceiling. It's a mini vault. Cool thing they do here too. Now they do use the smaller vent fan in the bathroom, but here in the kitchen and living area, they use one of those big full-size vent fans to really get some good air moving. You may also notice, uh, if you want some good cross breeze on both sides of the bed or from the dinette to the kitchen, this RV is fantastic for window coverage. Like when you look at it from the outside, that's not like, I think when you look at it, awesome windows and viewing is not the first thing you think of, but look at this. Like you've got like 270 degrees of viewing off the front of this thing, plus the bunk windows, you know, that's not nothing. This is also all pocket screwed lumber core cabinetry, which does mean screws into wood. It does have MDF fascia with a, um, uh, a sticker wrap on it, but it is screws into wood holding everything together. Uh, they, they add extra little outlets where they can. This is definitely a floor plan where it's like a little bit of a smaller version in some, in some ways, but they had to, you know, they had to shrink some things where possible to get it into a narrow body platform. That's another cool thing though, for towing on a tandem axle with a narrow body, this one is a very nice towing, lightweight little camper. Now this is an optional item up here. This is new for 23. This is the Stargazer Skylight. They had... Uh, I think the brilliant idea of where Ember RV came up with a Stargazer Skylight, one word, Apex came up with the idea of making a Stargazer Skylight with a dash in between star and gazer. Totally revolutionary new kind of stuff. Now, uh, the the shades on this work a little different, but it's basically like a, um, almost like one of those Lexan dual pane Euro windows, just a giant one mounted on the roof that pivots open. You see stuff like that on like, like Lance truck campers sometimes, you know. So it does have a day shade and a night shade. And actually, to give you an idea, here's a little look at me just kind of messing that thing around a little bit. Now, it doesn't have a traditional bug screen. And I know that that bugs some people. 
Boom, dad joke, number one for the day right there. I don't know, it might be number 10. I don't really keep count. It's number 37 as far as I'm concerned. But what that, sorry, what it does have, <laughs> you can pull that day shade to kind of keep the bugs out while you're in it. But once you close the window, the bugs are kind of trapped on the inside. So keep that in mind. Anyway, um, that bed folds out to a 60 by 80 true queen, which is rare in the world of Murphy beds, but it is a bi-folding bendy bed. But that is also one of its greatest assets because you do not lose the uh, the front windshield when you're in Murphy mode, basically, which is the, normally the way Murphy beds work. So that's kind of a cool AB sort of flip option. Now, one of the other things that you can kind of do with it there uh, is while it's in sofa mode, somebody can just kind of lounge on the, uh, you know, the, the back day bed section, if you will. Um, that might be a good place for, you know, a dog or a cat to hang out during the day. Man, if you're a cat camper and, uh, you got that windshield up front, letting in some sunlight, you, that cat's going to just be sitting there literally the entire time. Now, uh, some other details here, like you saw, we kind of cruise through all the kitchen space. Um, I like that it has a true pantry, but a point of consideration, it has exactly zero drawers in this thing. There's plenty of space down here, obviously. Um, but they put a shelf across it. So like you might put like a little utensil organizer. I sort of wish that was half and half where like part of it was, um, like wastebasket space. One of the things I do personally like is the way that they do that recessed stainless farm sink right there, as opposed to like a circle sink, which sometimes bigger pots and pans kind of struggle with. So they went maximum sink on this one. And again, they went maximum windows. We can kind of, you know, do a little uh, creeper action on these folks popping out of the apex next to us over there. They do not do any sort of propane oven, though. They only do a microwave. And that's one of those funky little things that make me go, hmm, kind of aspects about the, uh, like, you're going to call this an off-grid camper. But, eh, you know, they do give you a propane quick connect and stuff on the outside of the RV. But they don't give us a... Uh, like a normal oven on the inside. Now, that is a six cubic foot gas electric two-way fridge. Currently, that's all they're offering. I've heard from the factory, and my loose understanding is that they will be going to a standard 12-volt fridge at some point. Uh, that obviously hasn't happened yet, so kind of keep an eye out for that. Now, you might be wondering, where do I watch TV on this thing? It's not really a major TV focused camper. If you want to get a small screen, you could mount it against this right here. Your TV hookups are right up there. And thankfully, they did leave enough room between that cabinet and the slide fascia to be able to put a, uh, a flat screen on it and still close the slide without ripping the thing off, which is uh, kind of a nice, smart idea, obviously. But usually with a narrow body camper, you don't have enough space to put a real four seat like adult size for adults uh, at the dinette. This one does because they put it in the slide out. But smaller RVs like this, their wheel wells actually stick up into the body of the RV a little bit. I did not mean to have my finger that prominent um, in the camera. Apologies right there. I feel like a, uh, I don't know, a video visual proctologist right there. Never mind all that. Um, we're not making an appointment with Dr. Jellyfinger anytime soon. My point is, though, it is a little bit of a step-up slide, which normally I'm not a fan of post-style dinettes, but I like them in a step-up slide so you don't accidentally knock the table off of it and dump everything down. If you want to get around, the like some people like a little carpet on their toes, but if you want to get around that, get one of those like plastic um, computer chair mats. And uh, one of the things you can do with that is you can kind of cut it to size and screw it down under those post mounts. And then you can essentially create your own little carpetless dining slide situation right there. But to give you a better visual representation of what I was saying, when this is in daytime sofa mode, nothing says you can't sit up there, lay down up there, that you can't throw stuff up there because it's just solid bed decking under that. So that is kind of one of those handy dandy little uh, almost get out of jail free cards. And I'm going to actually break my uh, normal pattern of things. We're going to take a look at road mode right now. Because I think this is one of the coolest parts of this floor plan. It does have that. It doesn't have a full privacy wall. It does have a privacy curtain. That's normal with Murphy beds. But look at this. With the slide closed, not only can you put the mattress down, you have it uh, like a couple inches to spare. And remember, that is a 60 by 80 true queen. It's not one of the little shorty short pants mattresses. Now, to be fair, it is 
a little bit of a, a little backbreaker death wafer. I do recommend like a little roll away kind of uh, foam topper pad of some varying density or something like that. But again, when it's up in like day bed sofa mode, that works just fine. Little touch, I like this little personal touch they put in the 2023 generation. They started agony, uh, agating, I don't even know what that means, but I know they did start adding these handy little like uh, hanging storage organizers up here on the bathroom door, which I think is cool, but it just hooks on. You can always take it off of there. Headroom in the shower, since this is not an extra tall camper, if you're a little bit taller than the average bear like me, it's gonna be kind of limited, but then again, I only spend a few minutes here. I spend the rest of the time in the RV. It's not a deal breaker for me. It is a big preference, but like I could, if that's the only thing I'm not personally a fan of in an RV, I can get around that. I do like though, they do give us a dedicated bathroom sink. So I know some people really don't like washing bathroom hands uh, in the kitchen sink and you don't have to do that here. The, the hip and shoulder and elbow room on the, around the toilet's awesome sauce. It is really tight on my legs though in this narrow body model. So I hope you appreciate once again, sharing all the good with the bad with everything in between. And before I forget, these bunks over here, according to that there sticker, 300 pound rated, which means I better go eat some nuggets if I'm gonna exceed that. All right, so I, I, I rarely do this, but we are in extreme wide angle mode right now, just because this RV happens to be nosed up right in the corner of this display. Now, I know that some people get kind of motion sensitive very quickly, so I'm going to do the best I can to move ultra slow here, but it's the only way I can try to like actually show you the front of this thing. Now, this is actually interesting. I don't usually get a, a chance to display this uh, quite this obviously. You see these heavily tinted windows and whatnot, but when, when I'm recording my videos normally and I'm outside, the RV's not usually backlit on the inside because I'm trying to conserve power. Well, we're all plugged in right here. So what you can see is that even if you have a tinted window, if you're, um, you know, looking into it, the, the backlighting will just basically punch right through that smoky, uh, you know, tint and uh, not a whole lot of privacy. Thankfully, every window does have some level of privacy shade. Now, you know, the space and sense of space on this is greatly distorted right now. I do apologize, but this is a seven and a half foot wide camper. That is a very uncommon uh, body size of RV and it's uh, basically that's a measure of narrow body standard bodies eight foot wide and tandem axles so that is going to help this thing tow very very nicely now as we pop down here into the pass-through compartment I think I'll be able to get out a fisheye lens and to give you a point of reference I have not moved uh, just to give you a sort of a, a clue as to how badly you know that uh, that fisheye lens skews everything so that is our bigger better better charge controller that they have now this year but look at this this is a cool little thing apex does they put a 12 volt and a set of USB plugs right down here in the pass-through compartment so that uh, if you're sitting outside you want to have like a little Bluetooth speaker or something even though the RV has outside speakers I personally prefer Bluetooth speakers I think they sound better um, these are not amazing high quality speakers used on this brand of RV, but you know, they are functional. They will serve the purpose. Now, sometimes people wonder, oh, what happens if you leave that skylight open? Well, as you can see right here, it opens like so that God forbid you did, the wind's not going to rip it off from the front to back. Now, that being said, you absolutely, without question, want to close that skylight before you uh, leave your campsite. And I would make sure you put that on your post trip list. Now, that being said, you uh, also don't have to have the Stargazer skylight. That is an optional piece of equipment. The stable steps have since become standard. What is kind of cool about this one, just the way it sits, there's a lot of adjustment room on those legs. So if, you, uh, if you're on some really weird wonky campsites, uh, it's very, very hard for those steps to kind of get hung up and not work in an ideal fashion. Now, one of the things that we're looking at here is their like little kind of optional sort of off-gritty kind of thing. And part of that is uh, the bigger, more aggressive tire package. But notice too, because they have two different like sets of tires and whatnot, they actually have different kind of axle hangers. So if you want to drop the whole RV, like if overhead clearance to get it inside like a barn door is really a question, you can drop that about... Uh, an inch and a half or so. Now, um, quick little kind of mention here. Just because the way this floor plan works out, they had to be a little creative in where they put things like the furnace. Now, 
Typically in the summertime when you're camping, having a furnace exhaust over here, not an issue. The one I wanna give you a caution about is the water heater exhaust over here on the campsite of the RV. Being a dad myself, I don't wanna, you know, see or hear about some poor little kid like burning their hand by leaning up against it or something like that. So kind of keep that in mind. Maybe sort of put a chair in front of it to keep the, uh, the little guys away and, and girls and dogs and everything else. You get the idea. This is a little mini, if we don't want to call it camp kitchen because it doesn't have a sink, okay, little camp convenience center. And uh, once again, use my little Harry Potter magic trick. I can cast some light on the situation in here. Also, the uh, you know camera, conveniently enough, has a uh, a light built onto it. Very uh, very handy for those little moments. You see, there's but, but basically the extra power outlets there. And of course, there is a gas grill cooker hooker right down below that thing. Now, uh, this is one of the very few classic lightweight builds still really in the marketplace today as different manufacturers have shifted into or out of different things where it's a true six-sided all aluminum uh skeleton you know the the roof the floor uh the sidewalls everything all aluminum and laminated uh it's also now ever since the 22 camping season uh double asdel so the inside and outside layers both a composite material not a uh, a wood paneling hiccup time though they don't give us any sort of ladder access to the roof, nor is it even prepped. Like you say, okay, well, you know, could you guys install a ladder? No, not really. There's not supports built into the wall intended for a ladder to be mounted to. Now you can walk around the, uh, the roof of this thing, but you're gonna need like a separate step ladder to get yourself up there, which makes it a little bit tricky to show a solar package. Thankfully, I've got GoGo -Go gadget arms and you can get a little bit of a peek up there to kind of see what we're talking about with that newly expanded 200 watt solar package. And there's some folks wanting to take a look at this camper, so I'm gonna wrap this all up. Now, Apex is a, uh, a, a family of campers that has a ton of different floor plans. They've got everything from little single axle couples models and family models to these rare to find narrow body tandem axle models that are absolutely fantastic for towing up through full eight foot wide models with uh you know big super slides and some multi-slide models even with opposing living room slides like it's a very dynamic brand so like if you if you kind of like this you're like i like what apex is showing me but i don't need the bunks or i want bigger or smaller or whatever they make all those things and chances are i've got a video on most of them here on this channel not all of them but quite a few so check the links in the video description where you can see pricing, availability, and some other Apex models out there. And when you're ready, remember, we're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.